Hi everyone, my name is Kiran. Today we are going to look into that one of the uh, interesting uh, issue and uh, I really face in my project and uh, how to rectify that issue. And first of all, we'll try to understand that issue and that is uh, relevant to the Act 2 FTP uh, not able to access via firewall. So we already create a um, inbound rule as well as outbound rule in Azure Firewall, but still I'm unable to access the from client um, client server to uh, FTP server, we are unable to access. So a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of things is uh, validated and uh, finally understand the thing and uh, Azure Firewall, uh, something we need to make the changes. What made the changes, how to troubleshoot it and uh, we'll look into that detailed manner. So before going to jump into this topic, and if you are not subscribed to my channel, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like my videos, please like and give the comments. And um, so accordingly, uh, it's uh, I will create more videos. And, uh, you know, um, it's a very encouraging to me, guys. Thank you. And let's jump into the today's topic, Act 2 FTP issue with the Azure Firewall. So first of all, I will explain the scenario here. So uh, how Hub Network and firewall and spoke network spoke network and it's a everything it's a peer is all and in my scenario all subnets in the vnets all the subnets is a associate the udr udr this is also udr user defined route this is also user defined route what is a user defined route it's associate it's a, any traffic should go to the firewall after that only reach to the destination even same thing like this guys same thing like this in this scenario this is a ftp server guys and this is a client mission okay and we already create a firewall rule firewall rule it's a inbound and outbound why because of active ftp so if you want more understanding the active FTP in YouTube or uh, Google, you can search it. What is the difference between active FTP and passive mode FTP? Okay, so that you will get the idea. So here I create a already inbound rule and outbound rule. Still from the client mission, when I'm trying to access it, this FTP server, I can able to access the like authentication it's happening. Like authentication happening but after that data processing because of data processing when i try to process the data process here it's not working from the client mission data processing wise it won't work so i'm getting the issue so what i thought it's a firewall is allowing so there is no firewall issue so might be server issue might be this client mission issue a lot of things is a like troubleshoot and validated so many things happen so much uh, involved and everything, it's a, we did it, but still we are unable to resolve the issue. So what might be the thought? Uh, like one thought is a Azure Firewall, is it supporting active FTP? Generally everyone will get it, this type of uh, thoughts also. So that way, even we check the Azure Firewall supports active FTP. You can see here, Microsoft documentation, Azure firewall FTP support wise and supported scenarios also. Microsoft clearly mentioned firewall scenarios, VNet to VNet, network rules to configure, allow from source VNet and destination IP address 21, allow from the destination port 20 to source VNet and outbound VNet to internet not supported and inbound DNAT, DNAT rule wise it's supporting. In our scenario, VNet to VNet only through firewall so it's allowing so we already created the rules but still it's not working so we surprise and why it's not working so understand the thing here firewall when we deploy the thing inbuilt wise we won't get active ftp enabled how to check it active ftp is already enabled in our Azure Firewall in our 
Azure Firewall, it's enabled or not. There is any option? No. We can't see it here. Any option, guys. From this place, left side panel, you can see there are different options. From this place, we can't see it. Okay. So we understand the thing from JSON view. Click on JSON view, guys. From this place, and especially in this properties. So here, properties, guys. Let me highlight it here. This is the properties of firewall. In this turret intel mode, it's a enable that is an alert. But active FTP, it's not enable. It's not true anything. So due to that, it's uh, this is the finalized the thing and firewall. It's not enable the active FTP. How can enable that active FTP on existing firewall? On an existing firewall during the deployment, yes, we can add the properties wise firewall enable so that we can get it. I can show you even Microsoft given the documentation. So here in this, they mention if you scroll down a little bit and deploy using the Azure firewall, especially to deploy Azure PowerShell, use allow active FTP parameter, create a firewall with the allow active, active FTP. So mm -hmm. when deploying the Azure firewall, active FTP, how to allow it. So this is a one PowerShell script and updating an existing firewall by using the PowerShell. So if you already have firewall, on that firewall, you want to enable the active FTP. So how to do it? And Microsoft given the PowerShell step. So totally what I am saying that here, GUI, portal level, we can't enable. There is no option at all for GUI level. So only just validating like this way. So where is the active FTP is enabled or not? From this properties, if it is a, you can able to see active FTP enabled or not. So if it is, there is no nothing means it's not enabled, not enabled. Now in this scenario, how to enable? I require the Azure PowerShell. So I'm going to use it Cloud Shell here. Already Microsoft given the PowerShell script. Let's take it that PowerShell script here. I already copied from the documentation. I already provide my resource group name and firewall name. Accordingly, these commands I'm going to run guys. I'm going to run. First of all, this is a variable and a resource group variable copied and uh, paste it here. So enter. First of all, enable the resource group. And after that, variable for Azure Firewall. Copy. So here. So you can see guys, it's a little bit, it's a issue with my PowerShell. Um, so let me, yes, let me try like this way. Otherwise I will type dollar A F W. Oh, again, it's a uh, coming like this. Mm. Okay. Let me close it. Try to cloud shell again open. Just a minute. And copy paste, especially this is a very big problem, guys. Very big problem with this. And this is a one I observed from cloud shell. But uh, let me try to do it. So this way, dollar RG name, and I should provide the RG name here and copied here um, so otherwise also totally i will copy let's uh, complete the this task copy paste it yes now properly paste enter and next is a firewall file code entry and copy and providing the firewall paste it enter and after that there is again variable totally firewall and resource group it's a valid details or not it's going to so paste it okay enter it's a if it is not available with this name resource group or firewall will get the error guys so already i have 
and active FTP should be enabled. That's the reason I'm. Uh, this is a command, guys. And firewall on that is allow active FTP is a true. That means it's a allowing active FTP. So it's not going to enable right now. Just is a variable wise. It's a uh, we providing here that needs to be enabled in the firewall. Okay. So last command, it's going to update my firewall with the active FTP copied. And here I'm going to paste it. So this is a command. It's updating that allow add active FTP guys. It will take a little bit time to update the firewall. So in this scenario, people, um, everyone will get the one question. So already existing firewall running. Is it required the any downtime window or any impact happen? So what I got the information from Microsoft for this and it won't impact anything and any interruption it won't happen guys it won't reboot or it won't impact anything on existing firewall we can run it but one thing my suggestion better take the generally everyone all companies will follow change management accordingly raise the change get the downtime window accordingly implemented it won't take much time so you are seeing here how much time it's taking most probably five to ten minutes so you can take the 15 minutes of time and try to implement it. So obviously it won't happen anything, but safe side, we can take it. So as per company norms and follow the process and accordingly perform it in the production environment. So that's it. And once is a completed, this is a one again, we'll going to look into the JSON view so that I can show you on the same place. Now it will going to available that allow active FTP or not, I'm going to show you. Okay. So that you will get the more clarity on that. So after that, yes, issue it's going to rectify. Okay. So this is a totally guys, how to enable the an existing firewall active FTP. This is the totally issue and how to resolve it. So still I'm waiting for output here. Once is a completed, I can show you. Yes. Now you can see guys completed totally. And it's um, showing these are uh, details, provisioning state and so and so everything it's uh, showing. Okay. And minimize it and just refresh the portal because of needs to be update the firewall. Uh, once is a refresh, it will take it. What new things in the background? Click on JSON view. And uh, here loading. And now you can see guys, network, FTP, allow active FTP is a true. That means now my firewall supported this FTP, allow active FTP, now it's a supporting. So this is a totally guys, how to enable the active FTP. If you like my video, please like and subscribe as well as give the comments guys. Thank you very much. I will come with another video.